Hey guys, what's going on? This is Apple Investigator here, and in this video I thought it would be a really good idea to give you guys a speed test comparison between Apple's latest two A7 powered devices. So this will be between the iPad Air, the 9.7 inch full size tablet, comparing it to the 7.9 inch iPad mini with retina display. Both of these devices were announced at the same time, and it was surprising to many that these tablets essentially are the same thing, except one is larger than the other, and one has a much nicer and smaller form factor. So you can really take your pick about which one you'd like, but in this video we're going to be comparing the speed as well as the performance between the two as they both run A7, like I said. This is a 64-bit desktop class architecture, and you should be able to get some real good performance out of these things. And although they are dual core they do optimize with iOS very well to actually give a very high score on Geekbench but in this one we're gonna look at some of the actual practical uses that you're gonna be using your iPad to see if one will give itself an edge over the other so without further ado let's jump in so the first thing that we're gonna do is close down all the applications here just to show you guys that I'm not running anything in the background as well as clearing our web history so that we don't have anything cached or cookies or anything like that. And now that we have done that, we're going to start our first test. So that is just going to be launching apps to see what loads first. So the first thing I've got here is the WeatherEye HD. This is my weather app and I didn't really see any difference between the two in that test. The next two apps we're going to load up together is GarageBand and it actually looks like the iPad Air is going to win but the actual mini loads up the instrument screen a little tiny bit faster than the iPad Air. So an edge to the iPad mini there. The next app we have here is YouTube. This will allow us to see some web content being loaded within an application. It looks like the iPad Air pulled those up just a tad bit faster and as we scroll down we'll be able to see Looks like the iPad mini actually loaded a slightly bit faster there, so I wouldn't really give one the edge in that sort of test. It seemed like they were actually pretty even, to say the least. So now that we have done some app launching, I'm now going to ask Siri on both devices at the same time a variety of different questions so that we're able to get a grasp on what loads up faster. So in this case here, I just asked it what the current temperature was, and I got displayed the one degree in Ottawa answer, and it appears that they actually came up at about the exact same time. Now I'm asking what the tallest building in the world is and it appears that the iPad Air has loaded the answer up just a tad bit faster than the iPad mini. Now I'm just going to ask where I can watch a movie nearby. Although the iPad Air did pull up the answers just a tad tad bit faster, it wasn't anything significant that could affect your life in any way by having about a tenth or a quarter of a second longer. And now I asked what the NHL schedule is for tonight. Again, the iPad Air beat the Mini 2 by just a hair. Nothing really significant whatsoever. And now just asking it what the height of Mount Everest is. Once again, the iPad Air loading it up just a little bit faster. To conclude the Siri test, I'm just going to ask both devices a math question that could obviously take some time to answer. It does take some processing initiative to pull this up from Wolfram Alpha. It looks like the iPad Air did display the answer just a little bit faster once again, had has been the trend for most of these tests. Alright, so the last thing that we're going to really focus on in this video is the power that the iPad has been optimized to use Safari. So they have definitely improved the web browser so that it is able to take full advantage of the A7 chip. So the first website that we are going to load up here is just apple.com and this is just a typical website that all people like myself like to visit. We can see that it is loading up fairly quickly on the iPad Air. It is finished and it has almost finished and is now finished on the Mini Retina. The next site that we are going to load up is TheVerge.com. This has quite a bit of graphical content and it is actually optimized for the iPad. So we'll get to see that. It also has some video content on here as well. So it looks like we are seeing it come up on the iPad Air now. The video has yet to load the thumbnail. There it is coming in now. And the Mini Retina is still loading. It's almost finished. And the Mini Retina is now finished. The next site we're going to load up is MacRumors.com here, another site that I like to visit quite frequently. And we can see that the Air did pull that up just a tad bit faster once again over the iPad Mini. I am finding that the iPad Air does seem to beat the Mini a few times more than 
a little bit in our Safari web browsing test. Now I'm going to do NHL.com. Once again, looks like it is getting a little bit of an edge over the mini. This also has some video content on here. And both actually finished their loading cycles at about the same time. And now we're just going to load up one of the actual stock bookmarks, and that is the Disney website. So we can see that it is coming in on the mini here, and we are slowly awaiting its arrival on the iPad Air. So let's just see. Looks like it has a fairly large image there on that website. It is actually an alternating slideshow. Still waiting on the air, and finally it has begun to load its site on the iPad Air. So we will give the edge there to the mini retina. And now we're just going to close out and basic functions like multitasking and stuff like that, you won't really see much of a speed increase on any one of these devices. Uh, loading back into apps that I had loaded previously, I'm just launching up the app store here. You can see that the apps loaded in at about the same time. Uh, when I actually switch over to the top apps, we can see that it came in fairly quickly on the mini a little bit slower on the iPad Air. It basically just depends what kind of content that you want to be loading up at any given time. And if we actually click on some app info, we can see that the images have all loaded on both apps, so about the same time there as well. And something that I wanted to note that was very interesting in my speed test comparisons with the iPad Air and with the iPad Mini is the fact that the actual iTunes Store app is actually being quite laggy and slow on both of these devices. So this is in real time right now, and I'm waiting on loading screens on the Air and the Mini, and it looks like the Air has started to pull up the content. It is loading it in, and that is fine and all, but even on the iPad Air there, that took a while. But as you guys can see, on the iPad Mini Retina, it is still loading. And over the last week or so that I've been using this device, I've had a very hard time getting in to the iTunes Store. Loading up the content has been a really big pain. I wonder if Apple is aware of this. And like I see here on the screen, 50 seconds since the original startup of these applications, it finally loaded. So that was quite a long time to wait for the iTunes Store, nearly a minute. So the iPad Air as well as the iPad Mini with Retina Display have gorgeous designs. Like I said in the intro, there will be a video going over the differences, the similarities about both of these devices. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video as it gave a in-depth look at the speed and comparison between both of these devices. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to drop a like down below for me. And subscribe for more tech content focusing on Apple and the tech world coming in the near future. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.